Deep in the Pyrexian system lies the planet of Popper. Here the most dangerous minds are held captive by wizards who rule the planet with an iron fist in an attempt to silence the common people's uprising known as Popperganda. But two have defied the odds, escaping the planet and spreading their dangerous knowledge throughout the galaxy. Aboard the deck of the SS metagame, they broadcast their message of hope. Friday, it's popper time, and I'm finally playing Stumpy. Um, a lot of you probably heard about me or whatever the hell that means um, with regards to Stumpy. It was one of the first articles I wrote, I, whatever, whatever it means to be put on the map. I think it was this article that did it. Um, back when I used to play a lot of really long tournaments, you know, 9, 10 rounds, all day things, I played it. Uh, the deck's changed a lot. It's evolved a lot. I uh, saw this list, really wanted to just give it a try as is because I won't lie, I haven't played Stompy all that often recently and I just kind of wanted to swallow my pride and my knee-jerk reaction is always like, oh, I'm going to change this and I want this and I've, I always love Shinnin of Life's Roar. This doesn't have it. I played it, been having real good success with it, so I figured, hey, why not take uh, one of the more popular lists right now, play something uh, other than pure rogue or elves or all my other stuff. And I'll be honest with you, is if you're a long-time propaganda knight or whatever we like to call you, um, you know that I don't like to play popular things. Uh, I loved Stompy back when I was the only one playing it. Now everybody's playing it, so it's very hard for me to kind of go through and do this. But anyway, let me catch up on the chat here. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Sure, Rosamond in the house. Kunz Frazen, popper time. Crimson Rum, hello to you. And Arch Naomi Nichols, MTG Gato, and the Pult. All right. Yeah, these rounds might be fast, and if they are, uh, I might, uh, I don't know, play something else. We shall see. But I want to go over the list real quick here. I have a little bit more structure to our thing. Um, the standard list now of Stompy runs 16 lands, and the purist in me doesn't like that. I am running it as, as is, but um, so far so good. Hasn't had much of an issue. I think the main argument was with uh, Groundswell, and if you'll notice, this deck doesn't have Groundswell. But we do have Four Hunger of the Howl Packs, which if anybody likes the... Uh, my green one style deck. I just love this card. It's it's so good all the time. Nettle Sentinel, Quarian Ranger. These are all four ofs. Rancor, the Pit Sulk, probably my favorite one drop in Magic. And the Young Wolf rounds it out. Vines of Vastwood, our new Burning Tree Emissary. The three Ledge Walkers, four Nest Invaders, and two Epic Confrontations, and three Elephant Guides main. Um, this deck's kind of built to beat control and a lot of hate. Uh, a lot of times you'll face like Demir or, or uh, Blue Red Control, whatever, and you don't even side anything in uh, so far, I think. How good's Epic Confrontation? I want to talk about this before I even begin. Um, on, on the surface, looks like a slow sorcery, whatever. In actual gameplay, uh, it's, it's so perfectly situational. It gets rid of that one problem blocker. It kind of acts like an evasion spell. And I also want to showcase when you play cards like this this kind of breaks the rules of the colors a little bit i mean there, it, there's a little asterisk next to that uh, assumption but what i mean is green's usually not good at having removal red's not good at having flyers or life gain that sort of thing so whenever you're able to find a deck like this or a deck <laughs> excuse me still haven't had much coffee i've been uh, it's been sweeps i'm still tired even from last week but anyway no excuses um Whenever you're able to find a card that bends the rules of that color, it's usually a good thing. So much so that we've got two more in the sideboard. Uh, we've got Feed the Clan, two of those for Ben's Burn. I hate Gleeful Sabotage, but like I said, I'm playing it as is, four of. We have uh, one more Rabid Bite, just for the um, extra, whether it be a UR Fiend or when we really got to kill something. Two River Boas, which are situational only against... Uh, blue and two serene hearts again i would kind of prefer maybe three of these and, and they be tranquilities 
uh, just because of that or, uh, cadence of the turn with regards to hex proof and two Veridan longbows, which I would easily see dropping one. But again, having not played this for a while, I'm going to jump right over to the play lobby here and we are going to get started with a league match. And hopefully this goes well. If not, no biggie. Catch up on the chat here. Hello to you, MTG Gato. These rounds should be fast, says the Pult. And Nickel says, what do you think about the cartouche instead of confrontation? Not bad. One more mana, obviously. Um, anything anything I can do, uh, you know, to, to drop that curve is, is paramount. Um, and I think very key to the removal in this deck is that two mana spot. Like often against, uh, I, I almost said Muck Fey. How long has that been, right? Uh, Delver with, or Delver Snow, whatever you want to call it. Um, Having a two mana answer removal spell, I find usually results in a, they have to have a hard counter or the board states it's such where, where a spell stutter sprite can, can off you then, then all the power to them because they're probably already winning. Um, one thing I wanted to jump over here real quick was um, while we're waiting, if you haven't checked this out, Shiraz, can you bring up the link for the uh, format changes? This is very good news for old timers like me. I just love this. There's going to be these new like, crazy gigantic events that cost 25 tickets poppers is going to be sundays at 10 a.m uh, pacific standard time and i mean the prize payouts are are nuts you're gonna you're gonna uh, oops here we go we'll, we'll discuss this a little bit later off to the first match let's see what we've got but yeah check that link out that shirazman just hosted thank for that buddy uh very very relevant to popper very exciting um definitely don't want to be bringing rogue to that mikey ruru ah oh, one of our one of our viewers, and uh, we, we host this guy's channel quite often too, so here we go. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, they're going to be huge, just like in the old days, back when I used to play Stompy and stuff, where you just need that. If I have one piece of advice for tournaments of that size, man, you have got to favor consistency. you got a deck that wins on turn two every one in eight games, don't play it. You want to play that game that just gets it by, just gets it through. Uh, oh, the Pult says, depending on how many people enter, you have a good chance of at least breaking even. Yeah, that, I tell you, that's, um, I live for those really big turns where you think all week, who's going to bring what, rock, paper, scissors, the does that, I'll do this, all this stuff. But Mikey Ruru is uh, already down a minute. Too bad we're not playing a uh, timeout deck, but who knows, maybe it'll turn out being that way. We'll see. Come on, Mikey. Dead air here. All right, well, I'll go back to the... Uh, the, the thing here, yeah, so first place, 500 play points, 100 treasure chests, one non-foil uh, set of the most recent and six QPs, all the way down to 17th to 32nd place, 250 play points. Pretty lucrative stuff. Um, this hasn't been happening to me at all, but of course we're streaming, so it happens. We will mulligan this, and we'll keep this. We've got that standard uh, nice turn two play. I like uh, the interaction of Nest Invader and Hunger of the Halpak. We'll put this on the top. And we don't really need any more mana after this. Oh, we're good here. We'll cast our dude and keep on moving on. Good times. What's neat, too, is the interaction of dropping Rancor and being able to sack your Nest Invader token um, in response to them trying to nuke your, uh, your dude. So let's see. Well, we'll go like this. Hopefully we don't walk into a uh, Condescend for one. That would suck. That being the case, regardless, we've got it next turn too, so it'll just slow us down a little bit. Boom, come out with the burning tree, emissary. Come out with the nest invader. This is kind of a nice little optimal turn. We're gonna hit pretty hard next turn. And again, we're gonna have that little rank or howl pack trick, so. Uh, this deck is one of those decks I just feel like I can run on autopilot. Um, this is, a, I, I remember uh, was it Paul Dyson laughing at the term. I, I said it's a very good inebriation deck. It's like if, if you want a uh, solid choice for that, good stuff. Let's see, we'll go like this. Um, uh, I'm going to pop this now. It dies. I'll give this the uh, big red herring effect. It would be nice to have uh, Vastwood back up, but we don't. He's dead next turn unless something drastic happens here. Arch Naomi says, geez. Yeah, well, we did mulligan, but um, that is the power of, of just, you know, outnumbering that ground control. What I really do like about this deck, too, is that 
that toughness backside where, uh, you know, Electricery, I saw, I think it was in the uh, Card Kingdom event, um, gosh, two months ago, one of the burn players was bringing in uh, Electricery against Stompy, and I really don't think that's a good call. I, I'm just not, not too keen on that. So Epic Confrontation, you know, I kind of like everything where it's at. You could argue River Boa, but they don't really have any islands there. And I don't, if he does bring in Electricery, I don't really want to turn that on. Feed the Clan's not needed. Bow's not needed. Gleeful Sabotage's not needed. Excuse me, I should bring up this so it's a little more visually friendly. Um, I might want to slip in. I like bringing in two of these in the few games that I've played with it. I'm not quite sure what I take out, though. I think I'll take out the Epics, and we'll go from there. Um, you know, I just got just got a lot of a lot of staying power with this deck. Um, what you'll notice too is that uh, Groundswell is not here. When I used to play Stompy, that was a four of all the time. We were on 17 lands in the Quarian Ranger, and it was just kind of gospel. Lately, and I see the logic of it. You only oftentimes Groundswell is just a bad giant growth. It's only a two-two, and in that case, why not just run? Um, I'm gonna keep this hand. Hey, look, I'm on TV. Says Mikey Roo. <laughs> I'd chat with you, buddy, but sorry. Um, I, I I wrote something earlier, and I've got my hotkeys all set, and it was uh, it rolled the commercial. I'm glad I wasn't live, but um, anyway, um, ah, lost my train of thought there. Um, but yeah, the, the the synergy around a lot of this deck is just is nuts. So we don't see any red sources out. I'm just gonna try to threaten early here and uh, see what we can do here. Nest Invader's great. I really like it over Garrick's Companion. Maybe bring that up, uh, Shirazamon, please. Um, there's so many options in Stompy that it's able to kind of morph to the metagame very easily. Uh, obviously why it's probably number one right there. And I mean, how weird is this, right? It's the most popular deck, and I'm playing it. So, yeah, it's green, of course. I love green things, but um, it, it, it took a lot out of me to play this. I was like, yeah, all right. You know, it was mostly out of just... I don't want to bore you guys and play Elves again, which I've just been cursed with, riddled with four ones with that deck. It's just uh, driving me nuts. I'm actually running land grants. I'll go over that probably at, at the end of the show here. So thank you for that, Shiraz Aman, my co-pilot of this SS metagame, as we like to call it. Yeah. So yeah, this... Uh, oh, Groundswell, that was my train of thought. Um, yeah, this used to be kind of a thing with... Uh, with with groundswell but when you think about it unless you have the land or you have the quarian ranger out it's kind of dead and you can argue mutagenic growth is a, a better card in a lot of those scenarios so the evolution of it went from like four to three to two and now this one's running none and i have to admit my first again my knee-jerk reaction was like are you kidding me oh, you gotta do this you gotta put then it's like shut up old man <laughs> as mr t said in rocky three it's like let's just give this a beat and uh and see what's going on here so I'm going to favor, uh, we're going to attack here. I'm going to hold off on Rancor because, you know, I want to probably draw out the Seagate and the Rancor Hunger Trick. So I'm, I'm just going to be dropping my two drops here and we'll go from there. Um, it is amazing how often this deck uh, not gets flooded, but gets to three mana and it's opening like seven or eight. It's it's pretty pretty crazy. I always recommend, uh, you know, you want to play the the mana that you have floating up you want to play your most important spell first a lot of times if you see an island that's not relevant here but um often it is and i like to do it in this order so i can get rid of the uh right click triggers and i don't have to do it on another turn so just a little weird thing there sorry a little late says mike man 1978 good times yeah you better not be late with this deck it tends to squish pretty fast bump 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 what do we got something's going down oh all right that's dead. He's probably got Tron next. BTE would have been nice there. We'll drop this. Boink. Ah, here we go. Nest Invader. Good times. I sure wish... Man, how cool would that be if this little token gave us uh, green, wouldn't it? Oh my goodness. That would be nuts. Well, that was kind of a bad move, wasn't it? I can undo it, though. We'll just say that that died. Call that an Oops, and we'll do it so that our nested, or I mean our nettle sentinel untaps here. Attack. And always be careful to not always favor a 2-2 when you trip this because any deck can run gut shot. So you just got to be careful with that. Oh, come on. I already set this. Stop. No, I said always. What's going on here? All right. 
Maforthu V, thank you. Caps lock greetings, dear all. Thanks for chiming in. I think that's uh, the first I've at least attempted to pronounce your name, but thank you for joining us. All things popper here as we look at kind of the king of the metagame right now, which is uh, uh, Stompy. And we've got eight unanswered next turn, more like ten, If uh, but he's got Tron. This might make things interesting or not. I think out of uh, sheer respect for any sort of bouncing shenanigans, I might just uh, run at his face here and uh, who knows, trample over good times. Yep, stomping that green one. Yeah, I uh, going back to the original. Even though it's a popular deck, I was saying it's like a, not something I see. Yeah, I just don't like seeing that card. Of course, if I saw it earlier and he was on one map and didn't have Tron yet, it would feel great, right? Since we're not running Landfall, I'm not too worried about these other things. I'm looking for a trade here. I'd rather con confirm the damage here that we're going to go through. Let me bring this up. Worst case scenario. Do quite a bit of damage here. But, you know, he's got wiggle room now. He's going to be able to do quite a bit of stuff. He's got a prismatic prism and, and like, you know, any sort of fog effects. We, it might be a little bit too, too little, too late. We'll see. This build tends to just feel like it's got just enough to get, get over the hump, but who's to say? All right. Here comes 10. This does play like green one just because, and I, you could argue he's going to maybe be able to turn on Pulse of Marasa there, which not good, but I also don't like blockers in my way, and I don't want flickering tricks to start drawing him a ton of cards. So, okay. We've got some interesting stuff going on here. All right. Do I destroy target artifact or enchantment? Can I target anything with this? No, I have to target my own Rancor, don't I? All right, I'll do it. I need to untap. Not doing me any good now. And even if they counter it, it still untaps. This comes back to my hand. I'll play it. And attack, turn on Pit Sulk. Unless he's got a uh, moment's peace or something like that, which is very probable. Here it comes, probably. Mm hmm. Boing! Ugh, don't like that. All right, time for the grind. Secret tech, says Sharanya. <laughs> Let's two for one ourselves and walk into a fog, but gotta go for the win. You can't sit around and Twiddle your thumbs in these kind of decks. Feeling like there's a bit of a soft lock. We're almost hellbent. He's got seven cards and Tron. Drawn cards, defense in the yard. Yeah, peace out might be the best <laughs> way to sum up this second game. Yeah, I used to just have so... Well, with my build, um, go to Pure MTGO or, or search for Deluxikov slash Stompy. One of my first articles. It's such a frustrating thing too, because I went all out, just like I do it for propaganda, and I made all these great visuals and all these uh, cool little references and stuff. And up, oh, somebody's got backup and flicker math, probably, but we'll see. Um, do, 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 do. Sure, we'll put it on this. Anyway, um, I it was a very vastly different metagame back then. I even wrote, ran Rogue Elephant back then. I think just one. I mean, true Rogue, right? Even back then. And there was a, there were a lot of cool cards like, um, ooh, nice move. Um, there were a lot of cool cards like, uh, well, I played Shannon of Life's Roar, but then I also liked uh, the synergy with, um, hold on, I got to think here what to do. Boom, boom, boom. I think I'm just going to, yeah, I can't really threaten there, so I'll just attack with the uh, Young Wolf and turn on the uh, Pit Sulk and try to enchant it, probably eat a bolt in the process. But uh, I used to run like, you know, Wild Mongrel, Basking Root, Walla Package, which isn't that uncommon right now. However, one of the uh, cooler 
elements to it was um, I used to run Shield of the Oversoul, Shiraz, if we can bring that up. Because with when Shield of the Oversoul, I'm not recommending it for today's metagame, but it's it's pretty pretty hardcore when you have it on a wild mongrel because you can change colors, you can make it indestructible, you can make the mongrel start flying, you're feeding it I or excuse me, forests with the Quarian Ranger. It it can turn into a really good time. We have not seen Flicker yet, and I've seen a lot of coffee, so hopefully it keeps my uh, energy levels up. And happy early Mother's Day to anybody out there that is a mother. This is turning into a mother of a matchup, that's for sure. Sunday's the day. Make sure you do something special for your uh, mother of ruins or... Uh, oh, come on. There's, there's lots of mom references in Magic, aren't there? Let's see. Yeah, I think Mikey's going to pull this one out. Not the only way we can catch him here, catch him sleeping a little bit. Well, he must have a lightning bolt. Oh no, he's this is gonna come into play. No, oh, I forgot he got he got the extra mana there. Well, that helps. Let's go like this. Really like Elephant Guide outside of uh, bounce. Pretty solid darn card. I mean, it's kind of like saying eventually do 6-6 six, six for 3 mana because it gets a 3-3 three, three and then it makes a 3-3. Three, three. So always like this. I used to talk with, I think it was Paul DMK or, or one of the other uh, main Stompy pilots a lot and uh, had a lot of good interactions with that list. Elephant Guide, yes! Yo, 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 says Mike Man. All right. Here we are, here we are. Chime in if you're uh, just perusing propaganda. I know we're up against the uh, mothership and worm and all their signal with uh, some silly format. I think it's called standard where you have to pay a lot of money and it rotates out and loses you money. And the metagame's not nearly as diverse as the one we all know and love right here. But what you going to do? Let's see, grab him back. He's grabbing back that. I think this is a wash, guys. Going to concede here. Can't really beat the, uh, the lock there. So I'm going to... Well, he could screw up, but like he's a good player. I don't think he will. Let's see what he does here. And just like that. Yeah, we're just going to... Well, we might as well attack and see what the deal is here. Hopefully he's not watching the feed. I doubt he would. The Poo Tour. <laughs> yeah, all right. We'll give him this one just because... Might might argue timeout, but I mean, we're, we're taking some pretty heavy damage in the air and... Not much hope of, of stopping it there. So this deck doesn't run the uh, standard, you know, uh, uh, scattershot archers and such like that. So so against not liking that gleeful move, I just want to want to be very proactive. Did we see any islands, guys? I, I wasn't paying attention. I don't think we did. Feed the clan's not going to do anything. Longbow actually might be relevant here. Ay, ay, ay. Don't really. It's tough. I don't think Longbow is logical here because if we get to that stage, so many game lands. What do you guys think? Longbow or not? I think we bring in, uh, keep it like it was, two epics, and we go from there. We can get blockers out of the way. No basic land, says Shiraz. Thank you for that, buddy. Hmm. What do you guys think? Epic? Epic or Riverboat? More damage, maybe, right? Emissary makes an appearance. Nice. Oh yeah, it was a, it was very apparent in game one. Ran in a, it was like a uh, three two twos on turn two. I think it was. That was a pretty cool. No boa says the Polt, or I should say votes the Polt. What do you guys suggest here? I got two spots open. I'm thinking either the boa for more more stuff, or uh, Hods says, "Hey Hods, thanks for chiming in." Epic, he says to. Yeah, you can always boost. How does Epic read? I haven't played it that that much where it's like, can I just do it? Fights target creature you don't control. So they have to have a creature out, otherwise it's a dead card. Good to know against black. Epic says odds again. Oh, sorry, I'm rereading that again. Maybe we split the difference. One boa, one epic. And go from there. Hey, there you go. Matthew. Matthew 5, I, I, I'll call you, I guess. I'm assuming that's what the V stands for. 
unless you've got some cool last name like Voldemort or something of the Potter persuasion. Here we go, off to game three. Nice and competitive. Yuck! Oh, if any of these were... Well, no, I can't really say that, right? If any of those were a forest, it still wouldn't be that good of a hand. Hold again. Here we go. We like this a lot. This is, uh, if you're new to Stompy, this is kind of a two-land hand just because of our little friend Quirion Ranger. I was trying to pay homage to Rancor with my card design frame here. Uh, trying to think, like, what's better than Trample? Well, in my decks, I'd like the creature to have, like, permanent unblockability in green. That'd be pretty cool. So the Pult says, Deluxe. Obviously, each week, Pop Gambit has a different deck, or at least you usually play a different deck. I'm curious, do you often play a variety of decks when not streaming or stick to your favorites? Um, it depends. If if I'm up on, like, free event points, the second I have, like, two or three tournaments paid for in the bag, I'll, I'll play Rogue badly. Like, I'll play something that has no right even going 1-4. It's a sickness, I admit, but... Um, it always brews into uh, just neat, neat decks and stuff like that. I'm not taking credit for Stompy, but I was one of the very first people uh, to play it. And I think I was one of the very first to, to win one of those big, like, nine rounders with it. Back when, and I'm, I'm not joking, people used to go, you can't play mono green, that's suicide, you can't blah, blah, blah. But over time, you know, and, and the help of, um, gosh, what was his name? Uh, I can't, it's, 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 um, G. Weiss was one of them, and then um, a clog, I think, was the other one. And uh, between the three of us, we kind of went back and forth and arrived at lists. They kind of fell out of it. I stuck with it, and then yeah, it just kind of turned into a thing. And now it's like the king, which is kind of weird to see. But the same sort of thing kind of happened with Boros Kitty, too, where it was like this fringe, like, oh, that's silly. And then, wait, it, it kind of keeps winning and that sort of stuff. But so, yeah, I've just got, I've got kind of a contrarian mindset a little too much so we're gonna throw that young wolf on the bottom where it might be the best deck right now that's why I don't want to play it you know I want to I want to play to beat it but uh, I've personally I've been playing a lot of um, elves you know what I'm gonna go a little aggro here since he has mostly coming to play tap lands and uh, we're gonna try to turn this on get as much damage in fast as we can if this was against black or just pure red I'd probably drop the young wolf to kind of ensure that we're going to get in with the uh, the pits there, but exactly what we wanted to see. This is kind of the dreaded draw. I mean, it would be a little bit better if, if uh, both of these were shamans at this point, but um, eh, even so, um, I'll take this draw any day of the week. This uh, double pit sulk on turn two. I'm sure anybody that's played against or with Stompy has experienced this. It's it's hard to get out of. Not not impossible. But in like the new Delver deck, I know they, I think they run like two Swirling Sandstorms. If you can bring that up, Shiraz, I'd appreciate it. Um, to, it has that kind of surprise value and uh, really able to just, you know, kaplop, just drop stuff out of the blue. So Arch Naomi says, have you played the Celestia Silvers on the show yet? I'd love to see that soon. Yeah, you know, there's a Sliver deck that just wiped the floor with me in the best of ways. Um, and it ran, it, it ran the Gem Hide, which, you know, Sliver's all become bird of paradise and then it splashed blue for the um flying and man that meant the difference it seems so janky i think i talked about this like three four weeks ago it seems so janky and yet oh my gosh it, it was just it was beautiful it just uh like i said it too owed me bad and i think i was playing a really good deck like elves or something and uh yeah it was it was a trip i was i was really blown away by it all right, we're going to go like this, tap this to do this. The reason we're doing this, I don't know. I'm just being extra cautious. We'll keep our wirewood back. Hopefully he, Mikey's not listening and getting free tips, but it's my fault for streaming if he is. I played against a Slivers deck recently, says the Pope, and splashed blue for Distant Melody. What a trip. All right. So this is a trippy scenario here. Well, I like this just because I can kind of smash in. See what's going down. Two, four, six. What do you think? Do we try to smash for uh, vines? Five, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think we do. I'm gonna go for it. Keep him honest. Let's see if he's got it. Guess he doesn't. All right. This is just out of habit for playing Groundswell and Stompy so long. 
Always good to keep one up. Imply you got vines, something like that. Don't be lazy with Stompy. And we win a close one against our propaganda friend, Mikey Ruru, is how I like to call him. Ugh. Yeah, just typical of Stompy, just a little too fast. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it asks, it asks for you to have it right away. So, ugh, excuse me there. WLW against Tron. We'll go into another one right quick here and jump over to the uh, uh, collection window here. So, yeah. Uh, Elephant Guides, just, I always like this card. I I played it in my later versions of Stompy, but mostly as a sideboard against Black. The metagame shifted. When everybody's ready for Stompy, you, one, want to clear the way, and the other thing, you want to get gigantic. And if they deal with your gigantic, you still got a gigantic. And a 3-3 three, three is so relevant in Popper. I just look at, you've got all these shock-style spells like Disfigure, You've, you've got uh, everything that does damage is like two of chittering rats, ninjas, almost every goblin or RDW deck out there. So a three three backsides gigantic. Uh, remember when um, who was it? Tedly Ted ran that new elf build that had the uh, the three backside critters. I called it like the JLo elves because of the big backside. Um, that that was like th taking that theory to the extreme, and it was a just a good good meta game call on that on that side. So. All right, we'll jump into this here. Hey, Deluxe, I'm getting ready to pull the trigger and buy 20 of all the snow-covered lands for paper. Should I go for Ice Age or Cold Snap? Whew, man, whatever whatever one has the better art in your opinion, man, you got to look at them all day long. So that would be, uh, are snow lands uh, an expensive thing? Yuck, we don't like this hand. We're going up against Ninja Squirrels. Pretty cool name. Hmm, Mulligan. All right, we'll keep this. Yeah, we'll put that on the top. We don't have Aquarian Ranger, otherwise I'd probably shove that on the bottom. But we've got a nice, that typical spell, unless he's got Disfigure or Bolt. Um, what do you guys think? Young Wolf ensures that the Pit Sulk shows up. If we drop Sentinel, we could get stifled a little bit here. So what do you guys think? We don't know what the guy's playing. This is game one. I'm thinking Young Wolf. Anybody? Because if he can deal with it, we still turn on both pit sulks. The pult says Wolf. Wolf. All right. Making sure I'm not uh, lacking caffeine. Look at that. It's a clean sweep. Wolf, Wolf, Wolf. Whew. All righty. Oh, there it is then, guys. And thanks again for joining us, guys. I know you got a lot of choices, especially on a Saturday with the uh, Pro Tour and Worm trying to wiggle you into uh, their realm of paying a lot for magic and stuff. But we're over here enjoying the best format there is. I don't think I'll get any argument from that. We'll come in here. I don't think Popper's ever been healthier. Double pit soak in your mornings. Has everybody seen the new commercial? I'm going to roll to it after this next break and... Go grab some more uh, coffee for myself. But the Galvanic Blast commercial, I because of sweeps and being so busy and then having so many other new videos, I was just like, you know what? I'll just break the rules and spoil it on s last Sunday. So that's what I did. So hopefully you guys like that. Crimson Rome says, smiley face. Thought I'd lost a day. Mike Ben, did you see the uh, the new one, I should say? Let's see. We'll drop this on this. Definite big target on this one's back. Attack with just love Young Wolf against Swamps and, and uh, such decks. I'll drop this out here, and hopefully we'll draw into a Burning Tree Emissary. So we can kind of flow that out. Our opponent's kind of stuck on lands as we are. We get this back. Good times. You haven't seen the new one yet? Well, it's coming up next if you haven't. That's fine. Don't go, don't go mulling over searching for it. And like I said, I just felt like uh, giving everybody a treat and... Going that route. Let's see. Gosh, I wish this Nest Invader gave us green, but you know what? I want to drop this on this. Always yes, always yield. What do you think? Double Rancor on the Young Wolf? That's what I'm thinking. Kaplop! Try and kill that, sucker. Give us our stuff back. Might have wanted to mix and match that, but I'm going to put the uh, 
conundrum breaks on the opponent and be like, I've got to kill that thing. And it comes back. And then I'm up for removal. Hmm. Stranger than fiction. I'll drop. I'll drop the young wolf. That's fine. I think we're going up against Ratlock. Got to keep our numbers up in case there's another edict. Never knew you were a Trekkie. Oh my gosh, I have so much history with Star Trek. You have no idea. Not like it's a personal thing with me. I just, uh, I think every job I've almost ever had had to do with Star Trek. It's just craziness. I'll go like this. He's got the kill spell. All righty. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got two, three, four. He's got four cards. Chittering rats, maybe next turn. Regardless, he goes to six, four, gets him. I think we attack here, drop the nest invader, and wait. What do you guys think? We'll go for four right here. Um,. The, uh, yeah, Star Trek, it was like the first dot-com I worked for editing, like my first real job. We had a live show called The Prime Directive, and there's a really cool band that I know all the people and used to work with them called uh, Warp 11, and they're all Star Trek themed. They have like nine albums out, really good stuff. Carl Miller, Kiki Stockheimer, it was all Star Trek based. We built the entire enterprise, and that was my job was editing this spoof commercial seems obvious now going back in time but um that's what i end up doing but anyway it was it was a lot of fun then i i go to um cbs and i end up doing some uh anniversary commercial set for the the original star trek then i go to my new promo house and we get the account for all the remastered high definition versions of the star trek promo so if you see any of those i cut every single one of them uh Usually when you're on an account, you don't cut everything, but that one I did. So, all right. What do we got, guys? Enough about this. Nest gives you edict protection. Yeah, it seems like the, the play here. I'll just attack and um, untap, and hopefully we don't. We'll probably see a chittering rat. Either way, we got to throw back a card. But this way, we've got good protection. We can always uh, throw a uh, rancor on that, too. What's really fun is to put elephant guide on this dude and sack it when you need to and get a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> kind of silly, but in response to like somebody trying to kill it, it's like, I guess it works either way. But there was one scenario, I can't quite remember what it was, but it was a really neat little tricky play. But anyway, Fernand Dorbs says, two, thank you for chiming in. I haven't heard or seen your name before and welcome to Popaganda. Glad to have you. What do we got? What do we got? Chittering Rat is my bet. There it is. Boink. Poor guy. Probably doesn't want to see. We go for here. That's two, four, six. Crash and burn. Gains two life. That sucks. Come on, something good. Like, we don't know what it's going to be. What do we got, guys? Yeah, it's Naomi. Elephant guide. Spawn token for the win. Hmm. Rank or on what? What's the vote? Help me out here. Remember, there's a bit of a delay. Twitch is always funky. <laughs> Gotta kill something, don't we? Put it on the spawn. Put it on the spawn and swing. What do you think? That's, that's me hunch. Nest Invader says the port. Ranker on the token. Another vote for the spawn token. Ranker on spawn token says, Dirt Jojo 1990. Thank you, sir, for chiming in. I appreciate it. Good to see you and welcome aboard the SS metagame. Smash in, get Rancor back. Yes, either way, but I think our vote has been for the token here. So we'll go for that. Get foreign regardless. Hopefully, get get out of the uh, rat lock scenario here. I kind of want him to, to block here, so uh, what the hell just happened? Why did I tap two for that? Oh well. Can I undo that? Nope. Oh well. All right. Be careful when tapping near or clicking near uh, spawn tokens, carrion feeders, mog raiders, mog sledders. They can really ruin your day quick if you 
or of the caffeinated persuasion and clicking a little too eagerly. Don't we need to keep the t uh, token for edicts? Mm, I think if he's casting an edict here, we're going to win regardless. That's a way of kind of ensuring. Well, I guess either way was four damage. So what's this? Mole Drifter probably. Mole Drifter. All right. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do we want to see Hunger of the Howl Pack? No, but just as good, isn't it? Let's see. Two, four, six. Boom. Boom. Rancor to the rescue. And swing for the win. Unless he has snuff out. Main. That'd be kind of weird, right? Oh, God. Boink. So against the probably my my least favorite deck to play against. I, I'm not knocking it at all. It's just a incredibly solid list. I better not have six myself. There we go. All right. So we won that one. Now, but if you look at the board, we're kind of favored here. Now we want to bring in River Boa. We'll see. Uh, Epic's probably out of here. Don't see much uh, going on. Uh, feed the Clan, Gleeful Sabotage, Rabbit Bite, Serene Heart. I think we're pretty good here. Just bringing in more more attackers, more evasion. We've got the Elephant Guide back up. We've got the uh, ch -ch -ch Nest Invader. We've got Sohano, hopefully with some hunger going on. So, Yeah, that's true, Shiraz. Thank you for that. <laughs> Snuff out would kill him. <laughs> I'm, I'm such an optimist. A lot of times I don't remember the downside of uh, Snuff out. I'm just like, hey, man, check this out. I just love cards. For the longest time, I felt like I was the only one that ever searched for that. It was about four or five years ago, and um, when I I loved looking for the words rather than. It was like it's so key, and now it's like gush and uh, all these all these cards are kind of mainstay things. And it's just when you when you have a curve, a mana curve, that's great. You know, the lower the better. But boy, nothing's better than just free, and then you float the mana, especially in the case of gush, and go crazy. All right. Yeah, and you know, on, on paper, I wasn't too big of a fan. Well, I was a fan of Burning Tree Emissary and Stompy. Who isn't? But I think about two or three weeks ago, I said, you know, I kind of like it better in RDW. Uh, it just seemed like it had more outlets. However, the way this one's built with uh, so many two drops main, and uh, especially in the sideboard, I mean, it's like two, 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 two. It really feels more, yes, I'm going to say the word organic, but I mean, it, it has that synergistic uh, flow and feel to it. So. Anyways, Siscoms, thanks for joining us. How's it going? Good to see you and all that stuff. Ugh. I don't like this hand. Yes, we've got the mana, but we've got a slow start. If our burning tree comes out and he, an he has an answer for it, we, we really can't do anything with vines. Vine's kind of a late-game card. and Elvin I'm going to ship this back, guys. Don't like that hand at all. This one's much better. We'll keep. Um... Yeah, I got enough critters. I'm going to throw this on the bottom. I don't want to have to uh, be babysitting my uh, my forest there with Quarian Ranger and all the tricks. I'd rather sneak this through for some of this other good stuff. So we're going to bring our favorite dude out against anything of the uh, swamp-based uh, removal kind of decks. Go from there. Already at 22 life. Look at this. He's coming up fast, ladies and gentlemen. Up on the right, down the stretch comes the young wolf for the win. It'd be kind of fun to do a little racehorse sort of a thing. Oh, man, could you imagine? One of these days, the Kentucky Derby, if one of us wins the lottery or something, and we buy every horse and we name it, you know. And we got Burning Tree, a missionary, coming around the side, followed by Hunger of the Howl Pack, Queer and Ranger, and Silhana takes it. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Get that old-timey voice in there. Good stuff. All right. I think we can all see the coffee is kicking in. So thank you for that. The only bean to be baptized, if you want some silly trivia. I forget which uh, which pope it was, but they were saying it was of the evil uh, ilk, and they said, nope, anything that tastes that good must be heaven sent. And so whatever pope it was at the time blessed it. That's a pretty cool little story. Let's see. Definitely here. Get in our damage here. 
Feeling a little clunky so far, but it's all right. Return the forest. There we go. Hopefully no hiccups this week. Boy, I, I swear the uh, Twitch the last like two weeks, I wasn't even able to upload. I tried like six different times. Last week's uh, show broke in like three chunks. It's fine on this end, but boy, I just <laughs> couldn't catch a break. All right. This stage. Boom, 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 boom. We'll cast Burning Tree. Trying to get some value here to Silhana. Very good uh, target for you know what, our hunger. We just love having that. Feels a little slow right now, but we might get it through. Armies of two twos are great and poppers, says Mike Min. Yes, indeed, sir. All right. Did he play a land? Just in case he did, I'll throw this on the top. Don't want to get into rest. There we are. Hmm. Well, I say we crash swing here. Uh, we're going to cast this first in case he chooses to block this. Keep this back up. Go like this and swing with everything. Might live to regret this if he drops the ranger. What do you think? Keep ranger back? I'll keep it back. Come on, sucker. What you got? I don't want no flicker tricks. All right, something's going to die. Good stuff. Boom, boom, boom. That's dead. This gets nice and fat. Always yes, always yield. And we got a nice big flying fatty. Not flying. Not flying. No shrivel, no shrivel. Ah, shrivel. Shrivel me shrivel. I don't care. What's that going to do? Take out one ranger? Big deal. We ain't scared. But again, you don't want to have six yourself here. A lot of times, like, Chittering Rat Player might think, oh, I'm going to crash in and get some removal out of the rat. Well, you can untap the ledge walker, and that's all she wrote. Now he's got a blocker for it. Darn it. Mm -hmm -hmm. Vines is tempting to keep back on D, isn't it, for the uh, flickering trick at the uh, at your upkeep. Uh, what do you got? Let's go for it. Mm. Here's the two two. That's six, seven, eight. Well, oh, that'll be dead. All right. Go like this. We'll uh, undo this. Drop this. Play this, play this. And now it's just a, this is when BTE doesn't feel too good. It's like, look at this, and fizzle. Yep. I kind of miss mana burn. Who's with me? Opponent's at 9, we're at 20, but he's kind of got the rat lock thing going on. Hopefully he waits till our upkeep. And, uh, well, no, never mind that plan. Hopefully nothing. What do we got here? What evil things coming down now? Doomblade! Don't really have to worry about that too much. Hopefully he waits, or we get a Rancor and he can, uh, we, can, we can bait out the uh, Doomblade, unless he goes for Pyridine here, but I think he's going to go Doomblade. I miss Banner Burn so much, says Crimson Run. Let me just make sure what he's grabbing. Doomblade, of course. Hey, you never know. Maybe it's uh, 7 p.m. in his place and uh, he's getting hydroblasted. We shall see. Pausa, pausa. Finally. All right. Well, I think we just swing here. He's got Doomblade. we got to remember that. So um, we don't really need our uh, Quarian Ranger anymore. What's the best block you can do? Like a boom, boom. He takes uh, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think I want to go all in here. We can always just smash in with Ledge Walker here. He's got a Doomblade answer. It's yeah, the greed of wanting to get rid of something. Now he can kill one of these, so that would make that ten damage. 
and you don't I'm not gonna wait for the doom blade I'm just gonna do the thing he can't mess with and well hopefully that's enough unless he's got snuff out but like Shiraz said even then dead meat oh nice move but it doesn't work that way if it had first strike that would be a nice move but lifelink goes on the stack and he's dead if I'm not mistaken I, I lost a really big tournament doing that um, in a team tournament with Shiv and Worm I remember on the Odyssey block whoa what happened there anybody explain that I always remember that being the uh, that is really weird doesn't give it first strike this goes on the stack and uh, oh okay the pult thank you for that that's right the armadillo cloak that one works for but hmm interesting all right well, there's a neat scenario here because he kind of has to drop a mole drifter which kind of taps him out barring a trick hopefully we'll be able to get in that way Thank you guys. Paul Dyson, thanks for joining in. Yep, sorry. Looks like I need a little bit more coffee. That's right. It's one of those errors that I keep making as a player, um, even though I've been stung by it so many times, as noted right there. Um, oh, there we go. Um, so just out there, a note to myself, if I ever rewatch this, the way Armadillo Cloak is worded, maybe one of you rules hounds out there can uh, uh, ex explain that to me because uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little of the dumb persuasion when it comes to that. Um, Anyway, I'm going to roll to our new commercial guys. This is a um, long time in the making. Like I said, I usually am able to come out with uh, commercials and such a little a little bit more quicker, like when I hint at them. But May Sweeps is a big thing in the TV movie world. And so it's just been, you're lucky I'm even doing the show, right? Or I'm lucky that we're all here and I'm, I'm able to remove these bags from under my eyes. So anyway, without further ado, the first Twitch broadcast of... Galvanic Blast Breath Mints. I hope you like it. You've got it all planned out. Tonight is going to be perfect. Until she gets a whiff of your bad breath. Yuck! Now, fix bad breath fast with Galvanic Blast. Our breath mints use only the rarest scent crystals, unearthed from certified Mirrodin mines. Don't trust those other mints. They'll leave you hydroblasted. For flavor that will last, choose Galvanic Blast. Dealing damage to bad breath longer than any mint legal on the Tin Street Market. For a long-lasting flavor that is unsurpassed, choose Galvanic Blast Breath Mints. Feel the blast! Available at Morasa's Market. What's the largest number you can think of? Um, 100,000? 999,000. A million. In actual fact, it's neither of these. The largest number is about 45 billion, although mathematicians suspect that there may be even larger numbers. With so many different numbers to deal with, it can get a bit confusing, unless you use maths. Maths stands for Mathematical Antitelharsic Half-Fatum Septomen. Think of it as the language of numbers, with one equaling A, two equaling the, three equaling hello, and so on. We use maths at almost every point of the day, whether we're working out how to thread our shoelaces, calculating the optimal moment at which to embark upon a conversation, or, if you can fly, planning your trajectory for the journey to work. But some situations require a much more thorough application of maths. Let's look at some examples. Have your pen and paper ready. Problem one. Jean is shorter than Brutus, but taller than Imhotep. Imhotep is taller than Jean, but shorter than Lord Scotland. Lord Scotland is twice the height of Jean and Brutus combined, but only a tenth of the height of Milsey. Milsey is at a constant height of x minus y. If Jean stands exactly one nautical mile away from Lord Scotland, how tall is Imhotep? 
We'll reveal the answers to the problems at the end of the program. The magic of Yavamaya. Now in your kitchen. Mutani spaghetti. The only noodles whose power and tastiness are equal only to their legendary ingredients. Our pasta is made from only the finest weather sea. Imported from Dominaria straight to your dinner table. Enjoy Mutani spaghetti. Combine it with our signature of fellow's cheeses and finish it off with a glass of sweet Rashida. Mutanis! The magic of Yavamaya in every bite. Available at Maras's Market. It were there that I lost me dear Silhana. She walked her last ledge, but folks, me loss is your gain. So it's in her memory, Silhana's Window Walkers was created. The finest window scrubbing in all of Ravnica. Cleaning where only flyers dare to soar. Be reminded that they won't be getting blocked by new high prices with us, John John. Don't be getting blocked by high prices. Silhana's Window Walkers. Your pack member since 1906. And we're back. A little bathroom break. Got an opponent queued up. Timed that really nicely. And I can tell by your comment there, Dur Jojo1990, that you're new to propaganda. Hopefully you like those. Yes, we would like to go first. And yes, we would like to try to win. Hmm. Meh. Yeah. Boy, I don't know about this hand. Well, we've got Young Wolf Rancor. One mana. Ooh, boy, I don't know about this, guys. What do you think? Ship it or keep? Hmm. We got three on turn two, but I don't know much else after that. Hand is medium. Yes, I agree. And thank you for the uh, clarification on whenever and when there, the Pult. Appreciate it. Paul Tyson's hands for ship. We've got a medium, a ship. Anybody want to keep? Hmm. Good thing about Stompy. I don't have to worry, really worry about time. Got a few emails about the Esper control list and a few other, like, controlish ones, and I pretty much sum that up where it's like, I've got to narrate, roll the commercials, do all this stuff. It's hard enough. So that's why I kind of like to play aggro a lot live. Uh, we'll mulligan this, guys. Not much better, but hey, we'll keep. At least we've got critters. Keep this. We'll put this on top. We've got the mana for it all, you know, by the time the uh, curves out here, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Don't know what we're playing against yet. Round three, we're up 2 0 with Stompy, King of the Hill, whatever you want to call it. Of course, I've never heard anybody call it that, so don't call it that. Going up against Kai Lopes, Kiki Lopes. Uh, looks like Affinity, which can sometimes be an issue. This is all. What do you guys vote for the uh, Gleeful Sabotage? We've got access to all four. What I want to do here is uh, I'll keep our Nest Invader back to probably block a bunch of 4 4s, get in when we can, and get Ledge Walker active. A lot of uh, Affinity decks lately, at least when I'm running Elves, have been uh, incredibly fond of running. Uh, Croc Can Shaman, which is a big old crap when it drops. So I've lost a few games this week with Elves just being an impatient idiot and like, you know, oh yeah, look, I got Hydro Blast. And it's like, oh yeah, well, they were baiting me and making me counter happy. And look at this, they followed up with Clark Can Shaman. So be very, uh, does this win me the game by doing this when you're playing that and uh, go from there. That's my advice anyway. From this jacked up old man, right? In the woods. All right, ground control's already screwed up, but we've got a uh, fire blast in the air, putting our opponent on pretty pretty tight stuff. Hopefully we get a uh, hunger that shows up soon so we can we can turn on our uh, air patrol, ground defense, whatever you want to call it. Let's see here. Ooh. Ooh, a 5-5 five, five that doesn't block next turn. We don't really need our Quarian Ranger as much as we did in the original Stompy lists here. Hmm. I'm going to opt to just hit for one here. We'll hold back on the Elephant Guide. We're probably going to throw it on Sohana there, but... I'd like to get this blocker out here, turn on the pit sulk, and hopefully if he is in that mindset of swing, 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 
we're still uh, able to turn on Pit Sulk without having to enchant it. But if he taps all out, it might be a good target for it. After all, it is pretty hard to block a 5-5 unblockable unless, you know, you've got a 5-5 better. Of course, he might be running the, uh, what is it, that that gigantic 5-6 with the uh, built-in ability, can't block it. Who knows? There's our Breath Mints right on target. Affinity will always have this card in their opening seven. I don't know what it is. I think out of maybe 500 games, there might be one time they don't. <laughs> so, yes, the Pult says, Gear Seeker, sir. Man, you are on it today, Pult. Thank you for that. A lot more on it than me. Maybe you should be piloting this thing. But again, 16 lands. I already got three. We don't want to see another land here. It's getting crazy. So now we don't have to worry about our little pit soak, but hey, that's four damage saved to our dome, right? And I always get a little giddy because I play elves so much when I see the uh, Carapace Forge because it is an elf, and a lot of times affinity pilots don't realize that, and they end up turning on a lot of my ability, or they miscount timber watch activations. Well, -wifer, well wishers. And, and so. The pulp says, I never would have won a match with Stumpy. Oh, well, I'm sure you would have. Seemed like a very competent pilot to me. Especially just based on your knowledge. What do we got here? Main deck COP of green? What's going on? He's just playing that to mess with us. All right. Boy, we really, really, really... You know what? He's tapped out here, guys. What's the vote? Should we put it on Nest Invader and just hold the fort down and peck him in the air? I'll, I'll take it. What do you guys vote? Of course, that would let him just flare husk on it, trade even. We get a 3-3. Three, three. Still hits us for 7. Nah. Not sure about that. What do you guys think? Yeah, we've got some nice trade math here. And I can untap the Nest Invader. Yeah, we're going to go this route now. Put this on this. I'll untap this, bring this back, cast Rancor, and then as a combat trick, we'll be able to uh, uh, untap the Nest Invader and trade. So we hit for this many. Got two blockers, we'll be able to trade. Yeah, the Elephant Guide trick. Could be, could be. I kind of like... Uh, That will be six, seven, eight. Yeah, unfortunately, a th a three four isn't that isn't as good as a uh, nice fat four four surprise uh, unblocker with the uh, nest invader there. So she won't be getting blocked by high prices. That's right, says Mike Man. Ooh, does he have galvanic blast to ruin my day? Yeah, if we got it on the token, it's just a 3-4 when it dies, it would become a 3-3, three, three, which isn't that great against Affinity. I'd rather turn on the uh, Fire Blast logic here. He might have Fling, he might have Galvanic Blast, but that's why when I do play Elves, I Hydro Blast is so paramount, because other than that, it's just a bunch of real big fat guys that are easily blocked. So I know Affinity can kind of seem scary with its explosive starts, but when you take Red out of the equation, it's a very basic deck. Boom, boom, boom. And if you're watching, not chiming in, please do. I don't know you're there. If, if not, kind of a one-man broadcast over here. So unless I see your name tick by, I don't know. Arch Naomi, I hope you're feeling better. I know a few weeks ago you had a bit of a medical thing. So hopefully everything's all good with that. What's going on here? This is dead air. Broadcasters hate this. Come on, do something. Ooh, he eats the mana. Interesting. Oh, you bet I'll do it. Here comes the love, baby. Doink. Be happy to block here. Get our Rancor back. Sil Hana. I would love to run four in this build, but I can see the logic of only running three. Mm. 
This just got really ugly. Boom. And boom. Well, we win next turn unless something goes drastically wrong. Of course, it's always a possibility with uh, affinity, isn't it? One a tog, one fling, and we're dead. So that kind of sucks. And, you know, normally I would like a surprise value thing here. He obviously knows we know this trick, so I just want to kind of imply, like, hey, man, good to go here. Like, what you got? Maybe he's not paying attention. That extra card in our hand might cause him haste, or he might assume that we want to block. So just really trying to preserve my life total here. It's only got one card, but as we can see, now it's two. Then it might be a tog fling win, and we're dead. That's not going to help much. This is always a close matchup in my memory banks anyway of, of now he's, he's drawn four or five cards this turn. Cap up, says Mike Mann. <laughs> a little bit of everything there, Dear Joe Dear Jojo 1990. I like saying that. Good stuff. Yeah, don't where this this isn't a, this isn't a place for snowflakes. We like to yell and scream, all things popper, but it's all about excitement and just love of the format. That's all. It started off early, and like I've always said, if I could go back in time and not do that, because it causes more confusion, as noted right now. But um, it just kind of showcases who's who's been there from the beginning and stuff like that. And you're more than welcome. We encourage it. We call it capping up. Let you know we're just loud and proud, all things popper. Bum bum bum. Oh yeah, this is, uh, last I looked, there's not many flyers. We've got trample. I'm going to double block here. I'm not, I'm, there's no edicts. I'm just really afraid of uh, any sort of, I really respect affinity here. So we will block both. Well, should I block the uh, frog mite? Should I block the Frogmite with Silhana? What do you think? I'm a rebel, says Bingman. Yeah, at first it was almost a rule to write in caps, but it's kind of dropped off because it confuses people. Yes. Oh, good. He made the decision easy for us. All right. Affinity win. I got a feeling we're not going to win all of these. So let's see. Gleeful Sabotage. How many of you guys vote? I asked you earlier. Nobody chimed in. What's going on? Come on now. Help me out. I'm just a jacked up old man in the woods, right? That's another private joke there, by the way, uh, Jojo 1990. We were laughing about the artwork of Wireword Herald as the guy's all bleeding and made a bunch of uh, Deckard Cain references in the original Diablo. Encourage you to watch every week and then you won't be lost. That's how I get you, right? Always promos first. All right, Gleeful Sabotage. I have almost no experience with this card other than just disliking it. I almost feel like I should just keep running epics, but they might not be big enough. River Bro is pretty nice because we could just block all day, but he's probably got got the uh, gleefully, says Mike Man. Considering that we haven't seen a lot of non-artifacts, gleeful sounds good, says the Pult. All right, over Epic, you guys think? Boy, we really like this elephant guide. Trade and then some. It is refreshing playing against this. I think I might lose one Vines. One Vines. Love Nest Walker in this this matchup, but one Nest Invader maybe. One BTE maybe, just because the ground's so compact. I'm gonna do that. Take out both these. I'm gonna bring in all four Gleefuls. Anybody got a problem with that? Speak up now or forever hold our loss. Jamie, sorry, I just didn't want to give you bad advice. You know better than I do. Ah, oh, no, that's that's why I'm asking. Just want to get the uh, consensus here. I also think Gleeful Lands is a neat concept. Yeah, when it works, I don't know. It just always feels like kind of a win more. I'm I'm fond of the fog approach, strategy, tactics, whatever you want to call it, to uh, these kind of all-in swinging. I do eight, you do eight. It's so fun to just fog. Moments piece, fog again. All right. Well, I haven't heard many uh, screaming rebuttals, and we're at 40 seconds, so I don't like more than three. All right, I'll take you up on that. We'll bring back in Burning Tree and go from there. Thank you for that, Crimson Rum. Sound logic. Hmm. 
Yeah, maybe that maybe that deserves a cut. Who knows? Not too sure about the uh, double longbow either, but you know it's not like we can draw many cards in this list, so go from there. All right, we got elephant guide, we got Sohan, and we got the goods. We can block early. We can hunger the Howl pack. We technically have two lands because Aquarian Ranger here, so we'll keep this. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, and another uh, inside joke if you're new to propaganda. A lot of times we use the word F6 as in uh, F that, whatever, because so many times you can F6 yourself out of a out of a win or a loss. So got to be careful with that. Always trying to keep it a little PG. I've got kids, and I'm sure some of you do too. Um, you never know what the age restriction is or who's watching what. So there's all that. Anyway. Let's see. Ooh, we really like that, because now we don't really care if this bites the dust, do we? Go and get you some. One good thing about Affinity, it tends to take like three or four turns to really get going. And usually we've got Silhan in the air, and hopefully she's going to have a whole lot of help. Double Elephant Guide, Hunger of the Howl Pack. Hopefully they're not watching our stream and <laughs> getting a free duress. Oh, boy, this is uh, looking hopeful here. Hmm. Oh, boy. This just got ugly, didn't it? Why do you guys vote? It's already hurting for lands. You think we should rub salt in the wound? Destroy the land, or I think we develop and then destroy. Might be on electricery though. Chime in. I think we just attack here, turn on pit sulk. Do it, says Shazwan. I love how heartless you are, my friend. I dig it. I am too. But here's the conundrum. We drop Pit Sulk. We don't really want to howl pack our own Quirion Ranger there. Should you do it? PSA going over all in the inside stuff we come up with during the broadcast with Tim. Huh? <laughs> I think you've had more caffeine than me, my friend. You're typing too fast. All right, guys, what's the play here? We get more value out of Gleeful if we wait. I really want to cast Silhana here. I have an unhealthy love for blowing up people's land. Oh, I do too, Mr. Goblin Gardener. I do too. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. What do you say, guys? What do you say? We can buy it. I mean, how pack? All right. We'll bring this up and play a little more conservatively. Next turn, we can kind of go a little alpha strike there. So, Hana and blow up two lands next turn. Yeah, that's. Kind of what I was applying, but boy, if he is stuck, that's going to be uh, fun regardless. So this is kind of a cooler play here. Thank you for all the uh, chiming in there, guys, because now we can attack, play Sohana if, if anything dies here, and uh, we're okay still. Yo! Something like that. Oh, Lacker Ding, good to see you. Happy Popperganda Friday. That's right. That's what we all know and love, right? Good stuff here. All right. One, two. Hmm. Uh, I'll go here. Wait, did I already play land? Going crazy. Yeah, in case he's got anything, we can at least... Uh, next turn! He's got... Electricery or Clarky or something like that, we can at least uh, Howl Pack save save something. So we'll see. Element Guide this turn? Yeah, I, I know he's got Galvanic. I just know it. So now our path is quite clear. Now we can turn on Gleeful. For the love of God, let's do this. All right. So let's do Conspire. This and tap on tap creatures. We'll go like this. Now, this one is targeting that. This one always yield. And I'll say this one. Okay, hopefully, this just gets a concession here. They're targeting both of them, right? Ah. Hey, all right. This is just unfair magic, says the pole. Eh, it feels that way. I mean, he did keep a blah hand. So we're 3-0, going into round four here. 
at least we're going to break even, right? Be kind of embarrassing as kind of the granddaddy of Stompy if I went to like a 1 4 outing, but hey, it happens. It happens to all of them. Um, bong, bong, go, mo, says something. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, it's hard to read emojis loud there. Wow, that must be frustrating, says JoJo1990. Yes, Lacker Ding says. What does GSG stand for? Oh, good games. Okay, I, I thought I was missing something there. Whoop, whoop, says Mike, man. One person had fun, and that's the important thing. Yes, <laughs> well said, Shiraz. I'll go over the list here real quick. It sounds like we've got a few latecomers to the party while we're waiting for our next matchup. Um, just kind of a new new, new version of Stompy. No, uh, no ground swells at all. Just a whole lot of creatures, 27 of them, 30 if you count this, uh, 34 if you count this, and then uh, 28 if you count this. I mean, a 38 if you count this. So... Uh, Pretty crazy. Then you go on the sideboard, but only run 16 lands. It's only been an issue about one in nine games. I, the purist in me, really felt like 17 was more the way to go, especially with Quarian Ranger. Though I guess it, it kind of fuels it, but that's how I always ran it anyway. But it is frustrating how many times I get flooded with elves. So, um, but BTE makes its uh, new card appearance, and I have to say it's either this. Oops, rejoin the queue. Darn it! I didn't even see that thing flare up. Burning Tree emissaries becoming one of those you know the, the most played card and i think it's right there with augur of bolus when that when we first spoiled augur of bolus um just for the sheer ego value of it shiraz can you bring up that link because we got it seems like we have quite a few new viewers in here but if you want to see how we spoil cards shirazman's going to show a link here for um when we were able to spoil the modern masters preview card of augur of bolus because you know people write articles and that and nothing against that but my specialty is movie trailers and that sort of stuff. So we go all out. And when we first spoiled this card, we were like, well, hey, you know, let's, let's do it up different. Don't think it's going to see, it'll see play, but maybe not that much play. And little did we know, it's like in every single Is It build now. So it got real, real cool there. But yeah, I think the big two winners were Burning Tree Emissary, but especially uh, Augur of Bolas. So be very cool there so thank you shiraz that was pretty quick considering but oh and uh, another thing if you're if you're new to um if you haven't been on the mothership site recently and stuff like that we have um these new tournaments starting i think may 20th eight days from now that are just these gigantic awesome probably like nine round free-for-alls cost 25 tickets to enter go check it out shiraz has a link for that too sorry to just slam you with all these link requests there shiraz but so we really want uh bte here eh, this is all right hand i don't know i'm, I'm actually kind of tempted to ship this we're going second we'll keep it it's just good enough we just don't have much uh i'd feel bad if i shipped this back and got a no lander out of it so we'll see thank you shiraz Johnny on the spot today. Round of applause. Are there emoticons for applause? I never use them. So, oh, another affinity match. Let's see if this one hopefully goes the same way. Maybe I'll keep that back out of respect for pit salt. Who knows? Affinity again. Screwed again. Hmm. Okay. Boom, boom. Trade this out. Go like this. And we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Hoping you get mana screwed there. Oh, well. That seems to be what the consensus. You bring in three gleefuls. Why not four? Sure felt good last time. Crash in, I say. Two for that. Four for that. Unlock it. Hit it. Hmm. First things first. Let's clog this board. We just love having Rancor on our side when it comes to this stuff. Here we are. Of course, we can't really trigger the others, but it's all right. I get in or trade with something here. Hup. There we are. Plenty of blockers. I think our vines are going to go a long way. Hopefully, after this block, what the frog might happens. I'm going to get two in there, and uh, hopefully this uh, instigates kind of a uh, he wants to what do you call zone out on our. I mean, a galvanic blast breath mint are targeted for our rancor, and we'll be able to vines it. Won't be much of surprise value there, but. 
I just old habit. I used to always just like to keep one land out, maybe two, but I always bring in four Gleeful, says Shirazmon against Affinity, but I'm a sicko. Yeah, I think maybe we'll try four. Crimson Rum, did you have any uh, reasoning for Y3 just to prevent overboarding probably, I'd assume? Just seems like if you stop him early, you, you got a good chance. All right, so he's got... Feels like maybe some sort of a galvanic blast trickery. We'll bring our uh, our dude here. Okay, guess he doesn't have it. Hmm. Well, I'll go in here. Yeah, I'll try to trade fat. Alrighty. It's easier for the opponents to scoop. Yep, says Crimson Rum. Here it comes. Let's stand by for the tech. Hi, man, says Marco Vaccio. Thank you for joining us, buddy. Hi back to you, sir. We are playing my old favorite Stompy. Well, we can cast everything in our hand this turn, so I say we just go for it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Come on, sucker, what you got? I'm going to just keep trying to keep the board a little clear here. Could argue we could hit for eight. I just, I don't know. Bit of a purist, sorry. Boom, 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 boom. Take that. Shirazaban is right. I just hate to go over it. <laughs> Wait, Shirazaban says there. Oh, it's easier for opponents to scoop up their cards if they have no permanence in play. <laughs> So, so we're leaning towards the four mana vote. Is that is that what I'm hearing here? Ugh, not like this, do we? Oh, we do like this. That's seven. That's five. Throw that on that. Take that. Let's just swing, baby. Keep back some blockers, but we're here to do maximum carnage. All right. So we're up a game against Affinity. All right, guys, what do you say? Four or three? Four or three. Hmm. The last time we brought out this, this, one of these. Five, says Kuntz Fraser. <laughs> All right. Maybe, uh, well, Hunger of the Hell Pack's pretty relevant. It's not like we're running into too much stuff, but I'll take out one Vines. We've got room for four. Four. Lion Hair T505. All right. Thanks for chiming in. Rainbow Penguins in the house. Thank you, guys. Like I said, I don't know if you're there unless you chime in, so please do. I know there's ways to do that, but I'm a lazy old man, so be happy. I put all my effort into the commercials and trying to make it more of a show than a Twitch feed, but as far as the interface goes, i got to leave that up to my co-pilot, Shiraz. I'm on there. All four gleeful showing up. Dun, dun, dun. All right, I'll try to bring in five. We've got... Our nice little block package. Burning Tree Emissary, I don't think is that great in this matchup. There's just so much stuff that trades with it, so I'm going to cut that to three. Our Vines to three, because we you know, we only really want to kick that. So I think we like this hand. Go from here and see what's up. Oh my goodness, just got a text from my brother. There's a fire in his alleyway. Apartments behind us are up in smoke. Yikes! Holy crap. Talk about playing burn. All right, no land. About the third hand this has happened to us, but that's all right. Ooh, double mulligan. Yeah, all right, we'll keep it just because if we, uh, yeah, all right. At least we got a blocker. Maybe something will die and we can howl pack and just swing. Of course, this isn't a fog deck. Boy, how lame is this having to pass the turn? Ugh. 
Arch and Homie says, I once played in a play named Carnage. There's a movie of it now, if anyone who's curious. Ah. I used to do quite a bit of little theater acting myself. It's fun stuff. One of my favorite plays I was in, it didn't have barely any good part. I played a Nosferatu and uh, Dracula. But it was so cool because it was near the Lake Tahoe area and we had uh, fog machines and it was always raining outside. and just ah, It just felt so cool and awesome and just gritty and dark. And Boy, I wish I had the mana to make them pay for that with the Howl Pack, but what are you going to do? I think we're going to lose this one unless we get... Oh, boy. Yeah, we can't really take this much damage. This is when you do wish you had fog because this is winnable with a moment's peace hand. Just keep pinging them, pinging them, pinging them, and going from there, so... Elephant Guide. Now if we get... Let's see. We're going to be taking 12 next turn. One Galvanic Blast or a Fling finishes us. Hi, hi, hi. Pretty sure we've lost this one. He's almost hellbent, though. So, um... I don't really have any life gain effects, which is a very weird thing for me to not have in a... a, um brew of mine here you could argue we could hold back and prevent one attack and only take 10 or 8 what do you think mm -hmm. but if he's at 16 and we're able to double howl pack that will make this 10 and it's still not enough. If we got like a ranger back up. Swinging seems super close, says Dao the Ninja. I love the Dao De Ching. Thank you for chiming in, Dao. Syscom says, my son's 10th birthday, and I bought booster packs to play versions of draft. <laughs> Sounds like me. We also play Popper. It's a great way to share the game you love with your son. Boy, I'll say, you said something there, Syscoms. There is, I don't know if any of you parents out there, your kids just are doing this all their life on their phone. Do, 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 do. And you talk to them, they, they're half in the conversation. But what I find really helps, because my kids, you know, they hear an earful about magic all the time. And they know how to play a little bit. But we really like Settlers of Catan. We've got like 10 variants. And nothing puts the phone down and lets the kid actually talk and converse with you like, like the old days better than a board game. So any new parents, parents out there need a trick, that's that's the way to do it. Dr. Ding says, it's a loss. There's no way to win the race. Yeah. If we, I'll just pass the turn because if we if we drop into a um, what do you call the the nest invader, we might be able to if he if he only attacks for eight here, but we're pretty we're pretty dead here. What a strange card! Why would you bring in relics? That's a strange one. At least this way we're we're out of galvanic blast math, but not much else, right? Oof. Six, four, five, yep, we're dead. Might as well just stop the bleeding here. Here's a L for that. Three and O on the day, hopefully making this four O as magic takes forever to say you wanna go to sideboard? Yeah I do. Kinda liked everything we had there. I don't know, River Boa? Might be junking it up, eh? Be nice to have a permanent blocker like that. I'm going to bring in one river boa. Who? One river boa. There's a young wolf. I'm liking that. What do you guys think about that? What about rabid bite? Well, we already lost our um, target creature girl. Deals damage to its power to creature you don't control. That's a pretty good call, actually. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, because the difference of Rabbit Bite is that they don't get to hit back. So if we have a Rancor to anything, we'll be able to kind of trade. So I'll bring that in. Lose one Elephant Guide. We'll go from there. Trying to drop the curve a little bit. All right. Yeah, I know it doesn't fight the Pult. Thank you for the reminder. Bum bum bum. Hoo ah. 
Yeah, I tell you, the next card I think might leave Stompy might be Young Wolf. I know it sounds crazy, but when uh, it's definitely the least powerful outside of like edict effects and, and you know holding the ground. That wasn't a presence. It would, uh, but like these are great hands because who wants to kill or block this thing? We will keep this turn on our pit sulk and hopefully draw into a land here. This is gonna be a close one. Depends what he's got. He's at six cards. Hopefully we get a Quarian Ranger or a land soon and uh, drop this out. Regardless, Young Wolf does represent a pretty good blocker, at least for two turns. Yeah, well, the Pult, I didn't mean that I wouldn't play. Uh, there we go. That's what we like to see. I didn't mean that I wouldn't play Young Wolf. I'm just saying uh, if Edicts were just not a deck or not, not viable, that sort of thing, I would, I would definitely... Uh, steer clear of young wolf of course you know you've got the argument on the uh, the ground it's a very it's always a solid choice too but go from here he's just no colored mana yet yikes what do we got here clark can shaman nope 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 here we go here we go all right so i'm going to tap this do this i do this so that i can float vines math out there um because I want to put Rancor on this right now. That's tough. Yeah, I, I just don't want to be a victim. I want to put the four-turn clock on him. Hopefully he taps out here to try to grab the... Because uh, we always know. They always have it, right? There it is. And the math works out good there. Put this on this. And then we're able to get in with our Query and Ranger and stuff. And the next turn... I'll pull in for that. Looking for an answer. Probably denotes he doesn't have. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. And he's tapped out, so we'll swing in here. Go for broke. Probably. Hmm. Oh, well, we like to see this. Lacrading says, ah, the Quarian, that explosive start, though. Kapow! We always have it, too, says Lacrading. Denied. Computer says, no. All right. We still got the, ah, uh, oh, that feels nice and, nice and clean. Always a nice, clean feeling. We're dead dog to electricery. Quite a few other things. At this rate, I think I'm going to attack with the Young Wolf. I kind of want that to turn on. All right. Might be folly. Okay. So that's, yeah, that, that old trick. I don't think that's worth bringing that in. Probably a, Definitely a misplay on my part there, but we've still got nice big fatties here. And I mean, if I could tell my opponent against Stompy to bring in relics, wouldn't you vote yes? I would. At best, it's kind of a one for one. You could argue it trips, but in a matchup this close and fast, I do not think you want to be uh, messing about with that. So here's where we want to crash into their 4-4 or a TOG in this case, probably. Yep, there it is. And we'll turn on our Silhana and go from there. Or not. 2, 4, 6, 8. Hmm. Ugh. I think the play here is we attack with everything. That's seven, eight, nine, yeah. We've got this way attack with everything and just uh, slow roll it. Keep this back, go like this, see what we got. I think this is the kill. Yeah, and we, we've got three mana with the Quarian Ranger here, so, but if he blocks the Quarian, then we just we just trip and then go from there. 
So he's got to he's got to lose a whole other artifact to get this up to speed. That goes there. Now if we trip this, that's a seven. If we trip this, that's a seven. Um, and he can just trip one more thing and block it. So we're gonna do three damage to him, it looks like, and then we've, we've got it next turn, I think. Unless I'm missing something. I mean, chime in if you think uh, I'm missing something here. Because the option now is uh, we could sack for that, for a uh, Howl Pack, making the uh, Pitsalk a seven, but you know, one more artifact activation. We could trade out. He's kind of screwed on uh, mana there. It's not like we have to really worry about a fling here. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pass it over and see uh, see him uh, eat this up. Okay. Yeah. So now in the other option, you know, we're doing three. We could do six to him, but it's like, eh. Rather. So let this go on through. It's fine. Bring this back. We will tap these. Go like this. Bring this back. Oh, all right. So um, I'm going to drop this for uh, ledge walker math. Make sure to click real slow like. And we'll go like this. And I think we're out of the woods. Unless I've missed something. So we got lethal with rancor next turn. I am just watching, says Lackerty. Yeah, sometimes Stompy can really feel complicated. I, I was reading uh, over in preparation last night. It just felt like perusing my old article on the original Stompy list. It's just riddled with all these artistic broken links. I can't believe uh, it's already happened. But um, so it was, I think, prettier to look at than to read when I when I originally made it. But all right. So we're 4-0 with Stompy, King of the Hill, blah, blah, blah. And nature calls again, folks. I've got to use the restroom. I'll be back right after this a commercial break. I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Will you be an angel? Please call the number on your screen right now. For just $18 a month, only 60 cents a day, you'll help rescue cops from their abusers. Please call right now. And we're back. Oh, it looks like already set. We will keep this. Last round. Let's see how things go. Not the best hand, but we got a one, two, three curve. What's this? Burn, maybe? RDW. Oh, boy. This can be a fight. I think this is a uh, is it blitz. But regardless, we're at least going to go 4 1. This might be that crazy untapped Thermal Alchemist deck with like Ophidian's Eye and the uh, Soul Bond creature and all that good stuff. So Matthew says, while discussing the mythology of the Popper Gauntlet, Dan from Magic Gathering Strat once said that Stompy tends to do well against many tier decks and tends to struggle against many meh ones. Do you feel like it still holds? I think it's kind of stronger than ever. It's it's just, it's, a, it's evolved just like all decks, you know, tend to do. But the... Um, the ability for this to just trade with creatures and the creature of your choice too. I mean, that's a very important point. Um, it's just gigantic. Plus, do, who doesn't like five fives that come back as a three three if the person spends their turn destroying it? Oh, of oh, Farfa says, I'm also wondering about the initiative's companion in Stompy can be played um, off of BTE and play more dudes. I'd have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure not to sound like some 
pauper elitist, but I'm pretty sure I thought of everything. I, th I would like to think. So here's one of those BTE is a, uh, you know, even when you top deck it, uh, when you, instead of having a, this tends to really make the curve feel super even. You've got those early plays and then it, anything afterwards uh, cleans up after this, but we'll play this into ledge walker. Make sure to right click always, always, always. I think we're going to see a Kiln Fiend here. This is when we really do like uh, our little uh, Nest Invader token because they have to uh, get protection from that with Apostle's Blessing in a, a variety of different ways. So hopefully that's enough there. Is it Bliss says Dallas? Yeah, probably. And that's a very 50-50 uh, matchup with, um, with Stompy. Sometimes they got it, sometimes they don't. I mean, you can see here you drop it protection from green and it's all she wrote mm -hmm -hmm. volume over quality let's see I think we bluffed that we've got the removal and attack here Nobody likes to block Stompy when there's three untapped forests. So that paid off. Now, let's think about this. If we cast Elephant Guide on, like, say, anything, we'll have two blockers. Oh, no, we won't. If we cast it on the Nettle Sentinel, we'll have a 5-5 five, five blocker, which might eat a lot of math damage. I think that's the play. Or we could Nettle Young Wolf triple block and we still have that but again apostles blessing wins it for him here apostles blessing wins it but if he doesn't have that if he just has tamir battle rage and gush let's put him on maybe with a ponder backup so we're looking at some pretty decent damage now if we do go the uh, triple creature route meaning the untapped nettle sentinel We'll still be able to have a five backside if we block with everything. We'll lose two creatures, but then we'll have two, four, eight damage with the elephant guide. GW deck with companion, says Lackerding. Rancor it up. Nettle guide. Yeah, I'm afraid of an apostle's blessing. I guess that wins either way is the logic there, right? What do you guys say? Which one gives you more damage in the kickback if it doesn't have the blessing? It's a wash, uh, but we'd have to lose a, more creatures. But I like the creature plan because it, we can kind of swarm the board if he doesn't have anything. And I'm going to go with the uh, creature plan. It's because we still are able to stay on the aggro side of things. Technically have three blockers, which is still that five backside I was arguing. And then we get the uh, two, four, five, seven, well, within one with it. Maybe a trick falls through. Not liking this. Let's catch up on the what's happening here. Is he going to put it on the top or bottom? That's always a nice little drum roll of... Hmm... Top is always bad. Top. Uh-oh. Looks like we're going to lose. He said top, top. That's never a good thing. Here comes Gush. Of course, you know, maybe a Gataxian Probe will win it for us here. Yep, Lackerding said it all there. You never want to turn your back on this deck. And I'm a, I'm a little torn. What do you guys vote on uh, Is It Blitz? I might play this next week. Who knows? But I know it's going towards the Augur of Bolas route now. And uh, I don't know. I That first turn, Delver, and it just buys so much time in the air when you're li looking for your, your stuff. I know you argue hold the ground and it's a little more, you know, people don't even like to kill Augur of Bolas. It just feels like a waste of time just getting pecked to death like that. But yeah, let's see here. So that's going to be a whopping. Yeah, we don't have it there, do we? This is when we do want vines. Maybe he thinks we do have vines. Vines of Astwood, great play on this when he tries to battle rage, but fortunately we don't have it.
We will respect the beast. Yes, the Polt, you said it all. It's the very definition of glass cannon, I think. Come on, pretend we have vines. Let's at least bluff that we do. Yeah. Boink, down to the blitz. Watch our life total drop off exponentially. All right, speak up now. What do we bring in, guys? What do you vote? Big fat L on that one. I think the Delver version is better, more aggressive. You already have enough draw spells. I think so, too, but I think that kind of new card smell is affecting a lot of people there. River Boa definitely comes in. And the, I think all the uh, confrontation-style cards. I don't know if uh, Elephant Guide keeps the spot there. I think we lose the guide. What do you guys think of this? And uh, we definitely want to keep our vines in. Too bad we didn't have vines to thwart his plans. Yeah, that's why we'll, we'll for surely keep them there. We like the uh, keep three young wolves. So they're going to probably get rid of another. Hmm. Elephants tend to be too slow. Yeah, I lost those. You know, I got a minute and a half. I hate to be unprofessional, but I have to use the restroom again. F please uh, chime in with what you think else I should lose. Got to lose one card. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was just thinking that while I was uh, in the restroom, the water closet, whatever you want to call it. Nest Invader. Yeah, let's keep the BTE for the uh, aggro there. And we'll come at them with a fight. Here we go. Got to win the next two to go 5 0. Kind of been a thing. We usually tend to play a lot more rogue builds that go 3 2. Some four ones and stuff, but lately you've been having some pretty good luck live. Hopefully it keeps up. I mean, it's always fun to win tickets live instead of just use them to make everybody happy and play play stuff like, uh, what was it, uh, Flash Gordon and all those good decks. What I like to play first? Oh, yes, I would. And we don't like this. Home Mulligan. Good times. A little slow, but we got double. We'll keep. Don't really need it, do we? Of course, with the river boa, I'm going to say bottom on that. Because if I put it on top, I'm probably going to draw another one and just be like, ugh. But again, kind of a slow start here when we we can't really mulligan much deeper than this. At least we've got a double turn play, which kind of eats that first uh, synchronicity loss with regards to uh, the mana curve being early and all that stuff. Let's go another 5-0, says Arch Naomi. I hope so. But if not, we're still in the money. Which is always kind of the flavor of the day there. I, I tend to, uh, sometimes when I'm winning a lot during the week and stuff, I don't mind kind of casting money aside and just be like, screw it, look at this. Because it lets you play with a sort of almost a selfish abandon where you're just like, what you going to do? I got this all covered. All right. Here we go. He can't do gush. He might have uh, mutagenic growth, but we've got vines back up. So choose a creature you control, this one, and a creature I don't control, this one. Got to be careful with gush, too. That's a. Uh, 
pretty nasty trick against uh, being able to block the river bow if they trip it early on so be careful about that just gonna stay aggro here guys I'm gonna keep the vines for them or for the kill I don't really care if he if he ter takes a turn killing this that's great he's probably only got one red mana so and a probe oh there's bullis but we don't mind still gonna get in for a turn probably mutagenic is revealed so he can trade but it still does two there goes our unblocker yeah tough call tough call kind of like this though yes I would like to use that Oh, the selfish player in me really wants to uh, make him pay for paying two life for that. And I'm going to do it. I'm not going to wait around for stuff to fall. All right, I'll just keep it like that. He can still protect. Come on, don't have it. A lot of times these decks, you know, they have a one alpha strike creature and the fiend or the uh, clops and uh, that's good enough to keep and I don't blame them, but that's why they get to dig with ponder and such. Let's see what he's doing here. Keep chiming in, guys. This way Twitch has been so finicky the last few weeks. I get a little paranoid when I don't see uh, the little scrollers coming through there. Plus, it makes me feel like I'm not playing against a uh, a wall here. Get the community vibe going. Come on now. Ponder in the house. Hmm. Chose to not shuffle. That's never good. But hopefully it's a preordain and not. Ooh. Gush in the house. Never F6 when Vines is in the hand. Actually, never F6 if you can help it. Okay, okay. Whoops. It's always like playing with like a <laughs> atom bomb when you're up against this deck. It's like, oh, which wire do I cut? And you, everything's really slow and you're like just walking. Talk about glass cannon. It always feels like you're walking on glass. I know the frustration of piloting it often. You know, you, you turn up short. person has the answer for one thing. You're like, damn it. But wee He's got the Fiend. Let's hope we grab another fight card here. Ugh, not what we wanted to see. Because now we have to cast Vines just to stay alive. I mean, just to keep attacking. I don't know. What do you guys say? He's probably got, after all those cards, he's probably got a Bolt. And a block. It's not going to do much. Yeah, this is a, they're off to a slow start, but we're not too much faster behind them. That river bow was really a key loss there. Not that for the unblockability, just that sheer tempo of that two mana. I'm thinking vinesing the uh, nettle and going for it and acting like we've got a vines in our, another vines in our hand. We've got plenty of time here, guys. That's a good thing about playing aggro. What do you guys say? I'm of the, uh, you know, let's play to our outs and try to win this thing. Never know. Maybe he's just he doesn't have it. Lacquerding votes for a wait. Okay. One and one, including myself. Because, yeah, we, we could prevent the uh, super trample damage with vines. And that would still be able to untap. So that's that's very valid. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Don't be shy. There's no right or wrong about this. Just opinions, observations. Seven cards in hand, yeah. You're starting to make a lot of sense to me, Lacquerding. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Can I even undo that, though? That's weird. It's not wanting me to... Oh, there we go. Good. Come on, guys. I want dead air here. Somebody else other than Lacquerding. Waiting seems good. And I'm slowly going that route too. 
Thank you for that, Umbungabo. My heart says smash face. <laughs> Brain says wait. Probably wise to wait. Okay, guys. I will wait. I'll keep both cards in hand, and we will pass the turn here. I just hate playing like a victim, though, but I understand the logic, and that's obviously why I sided with the hive mind there. Shiraz dittos that, so even if we lose, we lose as a team. That's the spirit, right? Of course, can't really call 4-1 much of a loss. Good times. But I hope you all agree that it doesn't really feel like we miss Groundswell all that much. Of course, you could argue in that exact scenario would that have been 8-12 blocks with that still still not good enough all right gotta play slow here vines is such a good card i look back at my old posts and my old lists and some of my old articles and i only ran three of them and i want to go back in time and shake myself be like what were you thinking like, what's bad about this card always good counter spell on a stick fire blast counter spell Nope. If you lose, I'm out, and it's all on you, kid. <laughs> oh, I kid, I kid. Oh, it's always all on me. I'm the one pressing the buttons regardless. Okay. Has he played a land? He played an island. So he's out of uh, swamps after this. Vote to save it. Instead of thinking survival, because how do we win this game? He's trying to kill our only blocker. We can save it. Then we'd be blocking, wouldn't we? Can he do 20? No, he has played a land this turn. So, you know, maybe a ponder, 7, gush. What's that? 10, 11. I think we let it die. Yeah, I think, I think we let this die. You guys got to vote? we save it it's not much of an attacker it is a blocker trade with the fiend or here's a scenario we save it he apostles blessings he's at nine still gets through yeah but he can it's not like we've got a uh, unblockable dude his auger can eat up f three of that so let it die says Kunzfrazen. you let it die says zerlik thanks for chiming in all right um yeah, we'll let it die. Not like it can really do much along the way of blocking here. Yeah, I think that's the play there. Well, I can't really block that anyway, but that does make it a 10 now. However, are there any scenarios where uh, that would be 12? No, he can still block with bolus. Yeah, here's my suggestion. Watch your clock. Ah, oh, I got 13 minutes to lose twice if that if that comes to that. Hmm. So that's 10 of the dome. Obviously not going to attack with Bolas. He's out of mana. Five cards in hand. He will be able to make that unblockable next turn too. I say we just take it and wait. He can always vines next turn too after he kills his uh, dude. I'm going to let him have it. I wasn't planning on uh, doing any tricks with the Nettle Sentinel on tapping. Of course, if we just draw a forest, we're, we're really dead. And let's not forget how many fight cards we have here. The end result is to kill that thing, so. Yikes. This is getting scary. If he's got a gush here, I'm going to be terrified. Good grief. Well... There's that, but now we have to do this, don't we? Just to stay alive. 
I think you were right. Whoever said he's probably baiting out Mike Man 1978. Good call. Do I want to untap him? Yeah, I kind of want to try to win here. Doubt we can, though. One bolt and we are toast. Or one other trick and we are toast. Can't be blocked. Oh, and we go crashing and burning against the Nemesis deck that tends to beat Stompy 4 or 5% of the time, I think, in favor of. Like, it's maybe like where we're at 46, they're at 54. I would argue that. But so there's a new build of Stompy. 4 0 or 4 1. Would have been nice to 5 0 again, but can't be too greedy. Changes I would make. Um, I already discussed. Got to keep playing it as is. These uh, this ability for for uh, Stompy to fight. Um, don't overlook that. Like I was saying at the beginning of the show, if you didn't catch it, this the ability to break a color apart. Like green is not supposed to be able to kill stuff. And when you add cards like four epic confrontation between the main and the sideboard, we run two and two, and then you you double it up with rabid bite too. It plays pretty damn serious, so uh, being able to clear the path and all that stuff. Plus, we've got the evasion of the ledge walker and, uh, you know, pit sulk, stuff like that. So, good game, says Crimson Rum. No, says Mike with a nice echo sound effect. Lockerding says aggressive wouldn't have changed the outcome, I feel. I agree. I think we played that all right and stuff. So, Rainbow Penguin, what a great name. Well, at least the loss wasn't to an error. I don't think any other line would have won. Yeah, it's uh, and that's a rare thing. When I play live, a lot of times, boy, it's a comedy of errors. There's... I won't make any mistake about that. It's it's uh, awfully play, uh, bleh, rough to play stream live, do all that stuff. So what I almost played today, and um, what was I going to say? Uh, it was, I've been talking about this deck for a while now. I think this deck is well positioned right now, uh, Gone Deluxe, because you're able to, this is a my own my own little brew. I think I went, I went 5-0 with this about a month ago, but it wasn't live on Twitch. But um, this deck is all about commune with the gods. We run all four because we have so many throw it into the graveyard. We run two strands main, two rallies main. Um, we're able to go fetch the pieces of the Gond puzzle. And when that's out, we usually have bodyguard backup or we gain infinite amounts of life. Our mana is all crazy. It's like everything's flexible. We run, a, what is this, five planes, uh, three sanctuaries, one mountain, four gardens, two holdout settlements, which every creature turns into a bird of paradise, one forest, a boros garrison, four sands, two ash barons now. Just added another basic to, to make it even. Prismatic strands main and uh, the life gain package, usually enough. Battle screech, sends enlistment, all this stuff goes in your graveyard, big deal, you bring it back. Uh, we've got the other four, a uh, total of four between the yard and the uh, main deck there. Flaring Pain, three Oblivion Rings, four Standard Bears, and I think there's something else hiding here. Yeah, one Moment's Beast and Aerial Volley for the uh, Delver matchup. So I might be playing this next week. I might be playing Is It Blitz? Um, not quite sure. You know, chime in, all that good stuff. Um, still a little ways away from um, running, uh, what do you call, Pure Control, my Esper build, this uh, Esper Deluxe build that we talked about last week. If you're Curious about this. It's on last week's uh, broadcast. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. Doink. Boop. There we are. Sorry about that, guys. So, um, anyway. So, that's uh, Stompy, our outing. We're going to... Um, I'm going to roll through a commercial here real quick. And uh, we're going to call it a day. If you've got any questions, concerns, good commercial ideas, concepts, deck lists you want shared, discussed, all that good stuff, send them to propaganda at gmail.com. Go support Popper in all of its forms. We do. We love it. We love you for loving it and uh, all that good stuff. Anyway, and also make sure, uh, Shiraz, maybe you can put that link one more time for the uh, awesome big tournament next Sunday. I'll be discussing that at length. Not sure what I'm going to bring to that, but boy, you want to be consistent when it comes to that. So anyway, Deluxikoff out. We've got a few commercials, so please stick around and I'll chat with you then. I'll be on most of the weekend. Adios. What's the largest number you can think of? Dear Magic the Gathering, I'm returning your stupid goblin card. He's weak. Can't you make him less of a weenie? Signed, Jason Black. Uh, uh, giant growth. <laughs> Magic the Gathering, the trading card game. Well, Jason, what do you think?
this weekend only. Don't miss the 14th Annual Popper County Fair. Featuring Mud Buttons, famous chili cook-off, Evan Carr Justice's free legal advice, Moments Peace Meditation Seminar, and much more. Then, rock the night away with the hottest bands, including Ancient Grunge, Tamir Battle Ragers, The Shredding Winds, Martyrs of Ash, The Distant Melodies, Architects of Will, The Blasted Herbs, and many more. Arrive before noon and get a free Marie Lager at the Guild Gate. Tickets on sale now. Capolts and kids under 10 are free. The 14th Annual Popper County Fair. All proceeds to benefit the Spellstetter Speech Centers. The Marie Lager. If you are going to drink like a wizard, then you must release the beast. Marit Lager. Crack the ice and release your beast. Available at all fine Singer Superstores. Worm would like to remind you to drink responsibly. Attention, Papa Gandanites! Show your love of all things Papa with our Ultra Deluxe Playmax. And true to our Papa roots, the glorious artwork is 100% free. I'm trying to give these guys everything they can get to me. That's it. Just send an email to papaganda at gmail.com with the subject one, two, or three, and we'll send you the playmap file for free. I gotta read it again because my mind is just a piece of shit this morning. All you need to do is visit our friends at inkgaming.com. Order yours today.